All right, so our first segment, uh, we'll be covering Learn, Plan, Succeed. It's a short video just to outline our Learn, Plan, Succeed policy, and then we'll get into some uh, CPS scholarship resources. Learn, Plan, Succeed is kind of a really good opportunity for kids to help plan their future, as opposed to just kind of stepping out into the real world where you have to either kind of sink or swim. Learn, Plan, Succeed helps aid the student and guide them along to achieve more success in the future. The counselor is basically there to make sure that you got everything you need to be successful in whatever path you choose. The pathway is just a roadmap, a plan that you have for after high school. It doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's your life plan, but it's something that you have like plan A, B, C through Z. A counselor would be able to meet with a student and talk about as if they're not necessarily ready to go right into a post-secondary education. And it's really good for students to have that sort of option and to know that there's something coming that is fit for them and is tailored for them. So having that plan is something that all students deserve and all students need because that way they can really go through with it and if they really like it then they can make sure that they're being the best they can be after high school. All right, so now we wanna get into understanding scholarships and oops, I will enable the live transcripting for whoever requested it. Um, everyone, there is an option in the bottom of your um, Zoom uh, to enable the live transcript. So if you wanna read closed captions, you're able to do that. Uh, someone just requested it, which is why I'm speaking to it now. Uh, so feel free to use that. Um, so now we wanna get into understanding scholarships and connecting to uh, CPS resources. So again, I'm Zachary Jesse and I'm joined with our scholarship manager, Mr. House. Um, so in Chicago Public Schools, we have uh, many different partnerships with scholarship providers and we like to call those CPS strategic scholarships. Uh, these are people that we are in partnership with, we have a relationship with, uh, they could be an organization, company, uh, our institutions like uh, colleges and universities, foundations, whether they're just an individual foundation or maybe a family. Uh, but what they all have in common is that they want to target uh, Chicago public school students and award them. Um, if not CPS students, they're looking to award Chicago students or Illinois residents. Uh, and I want to highlight the class of 2021 uh, received uh, over $1.02 billion in scholarship offers last year. Uh, we have consistently as a district uh, been uh, our students have been awarded a uh, billion dollars consistently for the past six years. We do expect you, the class of 2023, to be a part of that as well. Um, and we know that our class of 2022 students are on the way to that billion dollar mark. Uh, so all around good stuff. Um, so scholarships, we have a database and system in, uh, in Chicago Public Schools called Academic Works. Maybe some of you have heard of it. Um, the website is linked at the top there. It's cps.academicworks.com. Uh, this is the main place where we'll, we uh, post scholarships. Um, we've had it since 2014. Uh, all of our students who go to CPS manage schools, uh, so that's uh, schools that are non-charter schools, uh, you all have uh, the credentials to log in with your CPS uh, Gmail credentials. You can get into the system. Uh, what happens when you do sign into the system is you are prompted to complete a general application. Uh, what that general application is, is like a common app where it will just outline your basic information, academic information, extracurricular, community service, th that type of stuff. And what it'll do is it'll match you to the scholarships that we have internally so that you can start applying for applications that are within the system. There are two sides to the system, an internal and external side. So that internal side, the general application really matters for, uh, for you to get done. Uh, because that will match you to those internal ones. But then we have an external side where those applications take place on the scholarship provider's website through their own application system. So just know that there's two sides to it. Um, we do promote around 200 scholarships through this system uh, annually. They, there will not be 200 scholarships all at once. It's throughout the entire academic year are 200 scholarships. Um, and the people using the system are CPS students going in there, researching scholarships, applying for scholarships. Our scholarship providers are using the system. They're signing in as well, and they're looking at your applications and scoring them. Our counselors are signing into this system to fulfill 
your letters of recommendation that might be needed for a scholarship application, a transcript request that might be required. Um, and we know that uh, around 10,000 of you are using the system every year. So we know that it works. We know that we're awarding students through it. And we know that a lot of you are using it. Next slide. So in, with the academic work system, we have a lot of automated emails that are coming out that are very important and time sensitive because in scholarship season, it's all about the deadline. When is it open? When is it closed? So what we've created and what you will receive in a follow-up email is this deck with this link. Um, it's basically a filter. So you all have Gmail accounts within CPS. So we have, um, if you were to visit this URL that I set up, tinyurl.com slash filter scholarship emails, it's a simple thing to download. It looks a little bit weird and wonky. It looks like a lot of text, uh, but you can download that, open up your Gmail account, get into your settings and go into your filters. Uh, we have a step-by-step -step guide right here. So you'll go into your filters, import that file that's in, uh, available through that link, uh, import it, uh, open the file and check to apply new filters to existing email. What this will do, this filter, will push all of the scholarship emails that come your way into your inbox into a folder called scholarship emails. It'll also label it as a priority and will label it scholarship emails so that uh, maybe you don't wanna check them right away, but you know that there's a folder dedicated to those scholarship emails that you can check on your own time. Um, Cause we found in some cases, the emails might end up in a promotions folder. They might end up in a spam folder. So what this uh, filter will ensure is that you get all of our scholarship emails. Next slide. I'll throw it to you, Mr. House. All right, so I want you guys to create an email. <clears throat> I want you guys to open up your email and send me an email. I am dropping the link into the chat now so that everybody can go in and send me an email to college scholarships at cps.edu, parents included. Subject line scholarship session. Again, I want you guys to compose an email to college scholarships at cps.edu subject line scholarship session. And once you guys do that, I want you guys to hit send and then hit refresh. All right. I'm going to the next slide, but the email address will be at the top of the deck. So still up there, college scholarships at cps.edu. What you guys would get in your um in your inbox is my auto response. And my auto response has everything in there for scholarships for CPS students. So you get our scholarship starter guide for students. You're able to see all the scholarships that we offer this year and go through and start planning for next year. You're able to sign up for the scholarship manager email blast. We'll get into that a little more in a little more detail. You're also able to review any scholarship email log that we've sent out from August up until now. And the great thing about that, the scholarship email log is, it's not just scholarships, right? It's also any pre-collegiate pre -collegiate, post-secondary opportunity that you as CPS students have the opportunity to join. And then also the Scholarship Alive Workbook, and then the Scholarship Planning Guide and the CPS Google Calendar. And as Zach already mentioned, Academic Works. So when we sign up for the Scholarship Email Blast, Zach, Yes. So the scholarship manager email blast. So this is what it looks like. And it's the opt-in form for students as well as parents. And what this allows you to do is get emails from Zach and I about any scholarship and any pre-collegiate opportunity. So you're able to see every time we push a new scholarship out, push out an email about a job fair, a college fair, a career fair, or any internships or any of our partners that's looking for high school students who participate in that program, this is how you would get the notification first. And then next is our scholarship alert workbook. It is a live document that's updated every two weeks or even often more sooner than that with new scholarship opportunities. If you see at the bottom there, we have a tab for elementary school. We have a tab for ninth through 11th graders. And then there for seniors, for you guys, you guys upcoming seniors, you guys will look at scholarships based upon the month of the deadline. So you see here, it says September, and you will see all of our scholarships that do in the month of September. You put scholarship info session in the subject line. And then here is our CPS Google Calendar. The great thing about our CPS Google Calendar is not only does it have when our scholarships open as well as their deadline, but again, any of our partners, if they have any opportunities coming up, 
you'll be able to see that on our calendar. And then you could bookmark our CPS calendar to your calendar. So that way you see all of the dates every day as you check in your calendar. So when we talk about vetting of scholarships, when we talk about scholarships, about 20% of the scholarships that you guys will look for on your own are fraudulent. But on tonight, I'm gonna give you guys some tips of the trade to help you look for a scam scholarship so you know once not to apply for it. So if the scholarship is requesting your personal bank information, requires the social security number, if there's an application fee, if it's saying that the money will be sent via Western Union, PayPal, or even Cash App, or even it says you're guaranteed to win. That is a scholarship you should not be applying for. Again, you should not be applying for this scholarship if it's requesting this personal information from you. But then also, if the scholarship is hosted on a blog site, if you see inconsistencies or unprofessional language or even grammatical errors, if the URL doesn't match the name, if the scholarship saying in order for you to be considered, you have to share this on social media for likes, or it contains an invalid or out of the country phone number or email. And then also if it doesn't provide you any follow-up information or there's no previous evidence of winners, these are scholarships you guys should not be applying for. However, when we talk about scholarships, there are a lot of scholarships that are done at the college and the university. These are institutions that have a scholarship specifically for CPS students as well as CPS charter school students. These scholarships range from $1,000 per year to a full tuition coverage. Scholarships can be applied automatically based on academic merit. So again, these are scholarships as you apply for these particular colleges and universities, they will automatically look at your transcript and consider you for scholarship. Again, we also look at uh, your FAFSA as well as uh, any other thing that you guys are doing. So if it's FAFSA or is it traditional or non-traditional FAFSA application, you have to complete that. But again, applying for these colleges or universities make you automatically eligible for their CPS merit-based scholarships. And then also, the City Colleges of Chicago. The City Colleges of Chicago have what we call the STAR Scholarship. In order for you to be eligible for the STAR Scholarship, you have to have just a minimum GPA of a 3.0. So senior, juniors, as you're ready to complete your junior year, you have about four to five weeks left in school. I encourage you guys to finish strong. And if you're at a 2.7 or 2.6 right at the cusp of a 3.0, get those grades up, young people. Star Scholarship is another great scholarship, merit-based scholarship. All right, and while we're talking about scholarships, another one that has a summer application window is the Gates Scholarship. Um, next slide. Some of you might be familiar with the Gates Scholarship. If you know Bill and Melinda Gates are big billionaires, uh, they have this scholarship fund that they've uh, had in place for decades now or a decade or so. Um, but this scholarship basically covers the full cost of attendance that's not already covered through gift aid or through FAFSA. Um, these are, uh, this is a renewable scholarship up to five years. Um, next slide. Uh, the eligibility for the Gates Scholarship, uh, you must be a high school senior. So it applies to you all, our uh, class of 2023, the rising seniors. Uh, you have to be from one of the following ethnicities, African American, American Indian, Alaska Native, Asian and Pacific Islander American, or Hispanic American. Uh, multiracial students are eligible. You just need that one little drop and you're good to go. Uh, the other factor is you must be Pell eligible. This is a very important factor. So when you're completing the FAFSA, uh, the FAFSA op will open uh, on October 1st. It opens on October 1st every year. Um, but what you can do prior to the FAFSA opening is complete a FAFSA forecaster, uh, which is on the FAFSA website. Um, to basically get an idea and a, and a forecast of if you will be Pell eligible and what your expected family contribution will be. Um, so that's a really important component for the Gates. So you have to have that Pell eligibility. Um, you do have to be a US citizen, national permanent resident, and they're looking for students with a minimum 3.3 weighted GPA, uh, not a 3.2 or below, a 3.3 or above. 
Um, and that student must also plan to enroll at a four year uh, degree program at a US, uh, US private or public college university. Um, they are looking for, you know, those leaders in CPS. So um, we, you know, they, they'll look at the, if you're a National Honor Society, they'll look at you, you're a member, but they want the president. They want the vice president of the National Honor Society. What are you doing in a leadership role at your school? Uh, that really sets you apart when you're doing your Gates application. Um, and this is sort of the important dates for that Gates. Like I said, it's a summer application. So it opens July 15th and it closes September 15th. Um, you'll see as you're looking at these important dates, it starts in the summer of 2022, the process, and it ends in June of 2023. This is a full year process of a scholarship application. So it opens July 15th as a questionnaire. Um, it's not really even, you might not think of it as an application because you aren't writing an essay for it right away. It's just uh, basic capturing your basic academic information, extracurriculars, leadership roles, that type of stuff. So you want to treat the questionnaire as your application and take it as seriously as possible. Um, then they go through verification of all of your uh, answers to the questionnaire. Um, and then you'll see they'll select 2000 finalists. But as you move through when you're having to submit essays later on in January, February to when they select finalists and do interviews, that number dwindles very quickly to 600. And then it dwindles again for the finalists to 300. Now in CPS, we have around three to five Gates scholars in the district per year. So just know it is one of the more selective scholarships, but we wanna put it on your radar because you all are here at our junior scholarship event. You all uh, took it upon yourself to make uh, yourself available tonight to get the scholarship information. And uh, it sounds like the Gates might be right for some of you. Um, so again, only 300 scholars will be selected from the gates. Next slide. Um, there's another, we have a video uh, on YouTube from the gates scholarship. Um, we will not play this tonight, but um, we'll have, you can view it at your own leisure when we send a follow-up email with the deck. Next slide. Um, what you can do before the scholarship actually opens in July is you can go to www.thegatesscholarship.org and just start your profile. Um, what that'll do is that the Gates will have your email address on hand and they will email you as soon as the application opens um, so that you are getting the most up-to-date information. Um, and then you can even peruse the site and just make sure that you're keeping up with their eligibility criteria and all that good stuff. Um, but you'll see last, this is a screenshot from last year and you'll see that, you know, the, the different phases there too. So those phases are important. And again, that qualifying questionnaire or as we, like to treat it as the application opens July 15th and closes on September 15th. Next, I'll toss it to you, Mr. House. So Posse, you guys should now begin nominated for the Posse Foundation Scholarship. Just wanna to touch bases about it today. Do know that Posse is a pre-DAP, DAP1, DAP2, DAP3 uh, selection process. So right now schools are selecting which juniors rising seniors to be a part of posse i just want to make sure that you guys know who, who are selected for posse represent your school your dap one interview start about august so just make sure you guys are checking your email and make sure you guys are replying to everything that posse sends you so you don't miss out on your dap one interview all right so we're talking about scholarships now it's time to talk about the strategies so we wanna help you guys have successful and great and completed scholarship applications. So first we wanna talk about putting you in the essay. The second thing, we wanna make sure you guys have enough planning time. And then the third thing, we wanna talk about the what to do's and the why's. So one thing I always wanna highlight is when you're writing that personal statement, when you're writing that scholarship essay, we want to know who you are. Scholarship providers know your name because it's on your application. They know your grades and the school you attend because it's on your transcript. It's up to you young people to fill in the gap and paint a little more color to the picture so they can tell us, so they can know who you are. So it's okay to talk about your strengths. When we talk about your strengths, talk about how your strengths avail you different opportunities, such as if you are a leader, if you're great at communication, and one of the opportunities you got is you did an internship with Chicago Sun-Times, or you're the president of the National Arts Society or president of your senior class. 
talk about that. If you have an academic weakness, it's okay to talk about your academic weakness, but when you mention it, talk about how you overcome or how you are overcoming your weakness. So if your weakness is math, you could say, I don't do so well in math. However, I meet with my math teacher during lunch. I got a tutor to help me improve my math grade. And always know your academic weakness, there's a threat that is attacking. So if your, your weakness is procrastination, the academic threat that is taking, uh, threatening is academic success, meaning that you won't be successful because you keep putting things off. So it's okay to, again, talk about your weakness, but talk about how you overcome your weakness. And then strategies for a great application. We're gonna give you three days, a nine task thing to do, okay? So on Monday, task one, you guys are to review the scholarship resources and identify every scholarship you're eligible for. When you guys sign up for the scholarship manager email blast, in that auto response, you're able to see every scholarship that we offer this year so you can start planning for next year. And then so the second thing you do on Monday is chart out every scholarship and the deadline using that scholarship guide to know which scholarships you're eligible to apply for as well as when that deadline is. Also, you're able to see what the scholarship requires, number of recommendations, a resume. You can see that now, so you start getting everything you need for that application. And then task three, review all essay questions required for the scholarship. A lot of scholarships have two-part questions. You wanna make sure you answer question A as well as question B. And then on Wednesday, you wanna complete all paperwork, including submitting requests for recommendations, as well as transcripts. And then you wanna complete all essays. The great thing about scholarship essays and personal statements, as well as you writing them your senior year, is that you're able to take essays you've written over the last three years and put them together and bring out a whole new essay. So you may wrote about an I am poem freshman year, and there's a part of that poem of freshman year that's great and it speaks to who you are. But then your sophomore year, you may talk about a leadership or something that you want to do. You can take components from your freshman year essay and your sophomore year essay and now use them for your senior year personal statement or your scholarship application. And then task three on Wednesday, ensure you have all paperwork in co completed, including the application. It's a good thing to make sure you got your recommendations, your essays and all your supporting documents but it's a bad thing if you don't make sure the application is actually submitted. And then on Friday, you guys should review and proofread all information you plan to submit. This is the time to dot your I's and cross all your T's. And then the second thing you do on Friday, submit everything you need for the application and keep a log of what you submitted. Listen, young people, take screenshots. Make sure you got receipts every time you complete the application and you send it off. Because listen, Adults lose things. Technology has glitches. So a lot of times your, your recommend, your receipt or your log is a thing that a scholarship provider will use to be able to say, hey, we didn't get your scholarship until after the due date. But are you able to prove that you submit, submitted it prior to the due date, they will go ahead and consider your application. Task three on Friday, send a follow-up email for your reference to ensure they know your component is done. Juniors, rising seniors, class of 2023, as you guys are completing applications and getting things together, make sure you send a gentle reminder to your counselor, college and career coach, or the teacher who's writing their recommendation for you. Let them know, hey, I, my application is submitted, my resume is updated, my body of work, whether it's visual or performing art or visual art, all that's been submitted, now I just need your recommendation. It's a good thing to let teachers and counselors know that your part is done and that lights a fire up under them to make sure they get their part in. So what do you need for a competitive application, the do's and the why's? So right now, you guys should be establishing a resume, a high school resume, which is nothing but a brag sheet. It is a good way to tell those who are writing your recommendation things that you've accomplished, not just in school, but out of school as well. Also, build relationships with mentors, group leaders, and coaches. You need some trusted adults around you that can help identify some of your growth points. So they can say, hey, yeah, they came in freshman year. They weren't giving it their best. But now I've seen them do a complete 180 and they turned that thing around. And now they're one of my best and brightest students. Ask people to use them for a reference in the future. 
So again, when you're looking at that scholarship planning guide and you see there's some scholarships coming up in September, October, or even November, it's a good thing for when school starts, you write a little short email to your counselor, college and career coach, or your teacher, or your group leader to say, hey, I will need, I want you to be a reference for me or a recommender for this scholarship. The scholarship isn't due until September 15th. I just want to put this on your radar. That way it gives them enough time to write a good, well-rounded recommendation for you. What do you need for a competitive application? Thoughtful and effective essays. What you write will compel the reader. Remember, scholarship providers are reading hundreds, if not thousands of essays a day. So we don't wanna see, hi, my name is, I'm a senior at. We know that again, because it's on your application and it's on your transcript. Tell us who you are, draw us in, okay? Strong recommendations. Who you select and what they say, it matters. Young people, I tell students this all the time. Choose someone who rocks with you to write your recommendation. Chances are, if you don't rock with that teacher, counselor, or coach, they don't rock with you and they wouldn't be a great person to write your recommendation. You want someone that can sell you on paper to not only that college, that university, but as well as that scholarship provider. So again, who you select and what they say does matter. Timely application completion. The earlier, the better. Don't wait until the last minute. As I stated earlier, computer glitches happen. Systems do crash. Don't wait until the day of when there's 10,000 kids trying to submit an application all at the same time. If you use that planning guide properly, you're able to complete scholarships two to three weeks out prior to the deadline. So make sure you guys are completing them in a timely manner. Get accountability partner. Get help. You want someone that can help review your application, proofread it for you, but also someone that can make sure you not only start the scholarship application, but you finish the scholarship application. As a scholarship manager, I see thousands of scholarships in academic work still in draft form where seniors are leaving money on the table. Class of 2023, don't leave that money on the table. Get someone that's gonna make sure you not only start the application, but you finish it. This is why we want parents, big brothers, sisters, mentors, all to sign up for the scholarship email blast. So that way you're always in a loop. So your son or daughter, niece or nephew, brother or sister can never say they didn't know the scholarship was due, when it was due and what the qualifications are. So make sure that the village is keeping you accountable. So I saw some questions in the chat asking about where can students apply for scholarships? The number one site that all CPS students should be using is cpsacademicworks.com. This is available to all CPS students as well as CPS charter students for scholarships. The next one is Naviance. Every student on this call should be familiar with Naviance and should be actively using Naviance. Parents, uncf.org, hsf.org, College Greenlight Education Planner. These are all great sites for you and your student to start looking at to apply for scholarships. But one of my favorite sites to apply for scholarships, and they're actually here tonight to talk to you guys, is bigfuture.collegeboard.org. And I will let them sell themselves, but bigfuture.collegeboard.org is a great site for you guys to be applying for scholarships. So seniors, rising seniors, class 2023, make a plan. Review and know your transcripts. Have copies of your transcripts on hand. Go on college tours and attend college fairs. One of the things that the pandemic has afforded us is that you're able to visit colleges and do college fairs from the comfort of your own home. So take advantage of those virtual college tours as well as those virtual college fairs, but know your transcript. When you're applying for these scholarships as well as even applying for college, understand what you need before starting the application whether it requires two recommendations, one from a teacher, one from a counselor, or one from a community activist, and one from someone in your school. Also, whether it requires you to send in a piece of your art, whether it's visual art or performing art, make sure you guys understand everything you need before you start the application. And then also, for every option, check the school website. Again, as we talked about earlier, 
all of those CPS, all of those college universities that have CPS specific scholarships or money set aside just for CPS students, use that. Look at that college list again and make sure that those schools on there, if they're not your top choice, they at least should be a safety for you because they have monies for Chicago public school students. And then take action. Apply for every scholarship possible. Leave no money on the table. Make sure you apply for every scholarship that you're eligible to apply for. Make copies, screenshots, everything you submitted. Keep your receipts and know the dates. As well as, as you guys are going into your senior year, there's work being done over the summer. Make sure you guys stay in contact and connected with your building. You don't want to miss out on any opportunities. Also, scholars, if you're a part of or know where ADES McKinley services are being provided, YMCA or the Croc Center, those are outside organizations that also have post-secondary resources, scholarships, college tours, college fairs. Parents, work with your students. Students, work with your parents. Several years ago, um, the Department of Education passed a law that every college or university has a net price calculator on their college site under the financial aid tab. So you are able to go in right now and get a rough estimate of what college will cost you and your family to send your young person or even for you to attend. So this is a good way to look at it and say, hey, this is my top college. This is my top university. I'm about fifteen dollars to $20,000 short of covering the complete cost. So you're able to go in and look and say, let me apply for this scholarship, this scholarship, this scholarship to make sure you have money to cover costs. Plan a specific calendar day to work on your scholarship each week. When I was over post-secondary at Bogan High School, we had what we call Money Mondays, where every Monday we dedicated that day to just work on scholarships. So young people, parents, guardians, big brothers, sisters, make sure you guys are sitting down with a scholar and you guys are setting aside at least one day a week where you guys are looking at scholarships and making sure that they are applying for these scholarships. The great thing about it, again, everybody on this call is able to sign up for our Google Calendar as well as our scholarship manager alerts. So that way you're not missing nothing. And then, Make sure you guys read, 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 read. Everything you would need to know for that specific scholarship or college is already on the application. Read through it thoroughly and all important documents. Young people, as I said earlier, check your email. Loads of information is missed because you haven't checked the email frequently. Make sure you guys sign up for, when you sign up for your email, make sure you are, double checking it that there's no misspellings in there or you didn't accidentally add an extra letter or number as a scholarship manager i get emails all the time when scholarship providers are saying mr house mr jesse we're trying to reach this person to award them a scholarship but they haven't replied back to the email so make sure you guys are checking your email and again accountability partners are necessary find someone who knows you who will push you to not just uh start the application but finish get it done and then as always sign up for our scholarship manager email blast email me at the scholarship manager at college scholarships i reply to those emails so no question is too small those questions will get asked and then young people do know that no one owes you anything scholarships are not guaranteed but can help can be helpful you must know how you will pay for college and scholarships is the way to get there so here's some of our frequently asked questions. Again, when you get the deck, you better go through these. We do have scholarships for all type of GPA ranges. You see that we have a scholarship for students with a 2.5 or below, okay? Make sure you guys are looking at our scholarship alert workbook, our CPS Google Calendar, and then the College Board opportunity. They will talk about that in a little bit. Also, here it is, our link tree. Our link tree is a one-stop shop for all Chicago Public School scholarship resources. It houses our academic works. It got our scholarship alert workbook. You can sign up for our email list. You can see our email blast. You can view all scholarships, Google Calendar. But the best thing about our link tree is our DePaul virtual essay editing. And they are here tonight to talk to you guys. 
DePaul Virtual Essay Editing, and it is free, okay? So make sure you guys are taking advantage of all the resources we have for you guys around scholarships. Make sure you guys connect with us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Not only are we tweeting, posting different information around scholarships, but we are highlighting our scholarship recipients on there, as well as if you are looking for an opportunity for your student, not just scholarship, for an internship, a lot of our partners are posting on our pages as well, asking for young people to volunteer, asking for young people to so, so, uh, sign up. So make sure you guys follow us again on all social media platforms. And you don't have to worry, we don't follow back, but just follow us so you have the information. And then class 2023, save the date for some summer boot camp. We're going to have some summer boot camp sessions, one Wednesday, July 20th, and the second will be Wednesday, July, uh, August 3rd from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. They will be one on the south side and one on the north side. We will talk about building your college list, have a scholarship workshop, do some FAFSA prep, and some writing workshop around scholarships and your personal statements. So you have any questions around scholarships before we turn it over to our next guest? Mr. House, I'll just interject. We're a little bit pressed for time, so uh, let's hold off on questions to the very, very end. And I will introduce uh, Mr. Michael Nick from College Board. And House, you can stop sharing, and I think Mike will go ahead and share his own screen. Thanks, Zachary. Appreciate it. And good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. My name is Mike Nick. I am a director with the College Board, and it's a pleasure to see everyone tonight. I'm, in addition to being with the College Board, I'm also um, a CPS alumni, and I've benefited from a college scholarship myself that I applied for. And my sons are not too far off from college age, so we're excited to, to think about college the college opportunities. Zachary, can you just confirm with me that you can see my screen? Yes, I can. Great, fantastic. So the college scholarship we want to talk about is Big Future Scholarships. It's a scholarship opportunity that, that College Board provides all students when they take steps towards, uh, towards applying for and enrolling in college. So we've been part of CPS and 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 this scholarship for, for over three years it used to be called the College Board Opportunity Scholarships. In the last three years, for the last three cohorts of graduates across the nation, we've given away over 13,000 scholarships for over $12 million. And that's trickled down to CPS as well, where we've had over 300 scholarship winners in CPS in the last three graduating classes. There's over $281,000 in scholarships uh, given away. Um, including one $40,000 scholarship winner from Brooks College Prep. You'll see continuously as we go through just a couple slides here on the bottom left, you'll see where you can go to find these scholarship opportunities, bigfuturescholarships.org. Um, you can also go into your college board account in order to find these scholarship opportunities. One thing I wanna point out that's really nice about these scholarships, it's probably one of the easiest ways to get scholarships out there, right? So there is no application to get a college board opportunity scholarship. There is no GPA uh, needed to get a college op board opportunity scholarship. All you have to do really is do a few clicks inside of your, inside of the bigfuture.scholarships.org uh, website or your college board account, and you can earn a $500 or a $40,000 scholarships. So again, you can find it us on bigfuturescholarships.org. You can sign up if you're interested for student search services, which means that in addition to signing up for the scholarships, you can be connected with match fit um, colleges that you might be interested in that also have scholarship opportunities. All of our scholarships are $500 award winners, but there are two $40,000 winners Per month, and again, we just we had a Brooks High Schools winner just a couple of years ago. There was a student just last week outside of Rockford that won forty thousand dollars. So it does happen for our CPS students. And I'm going to talk about the six steps that you can take in order to get the scholarships. The last really great thing about the scholarship opportunity is that half of our scholarships are reserved for students who qualify as low income. 
So hopefully you're gonna see that big future scholarships are easy to, to apply for and almost everyone can qualify for these scholarships. So here are the six steps. Hey, Mike, uh, we can't see the, uh, I know you, I, you might've tried to advance the slide, but we're still on the first one. Oh, wow, okay. How about now? Hmm. Oh, there it is. There it is, okay, thank you. Sorry about that, thanks, Zachary. So there are six steps that you can take to become uh, scholarship eligible. Let's go through them real quick. So number one, you can go on to Big Future and you can build a college list, which is something that you're doing as a junior now anyways. You're starting to think about what colleges might be in your, uh, in your reach or your fit or your safety schools. You can do that on, on Big Future and earn a scholarship. The second opportunity is to practice for the SAT, which many of you probably already did. You can link your college board and Khan Academy count in order, from your PSAT scores in order to get a personalized plan of practice for the SAT. And that qualifies you for a scholarship. The third is you can explore scholarships. College Board has a scholarship website that is incredibly robust, one of the better ones out there. Um, and you can explore scholarships there. And just by doing that and clicking through that opportunity, you can qualify. What you'll do as a senior before you, is actually go ahead and strengthen your college list. So you probably have a pretty broad list now. And as you come back to school in, in the fall, you're gonna think about narrowing the scope of, what, of this college you're gonna apply to. If you do that, you'll qualify. You'll complete the FAFSA, which I hope everybody on this call will do. In October 1st is when the FAFSA open, opens. You don't actually have to share your FAFSA with us. You just attest to say, hey, I did that. I, I, I filled out a FAFSA form that would qualify you. And then th six, opportunity is you actually apply to colleges. And again, you're not applying to us, but you're just attesting to the fact that, yep, I applied. And you would do all of this on bigfutureScholarships.org. Some of them are as little as one click. Some take a few more clicks, but it's really just a clickable way to apply for a scholarship. And then I want to show you what it looks like in terms of a calendar for, for your cohort, the class of 2023. So we're going to give away $3.1 million to the class of 2023 to over 4,000 students. The scholarship opportunity started in January. So some CPS students have already won this scholarship. In January, you could have started to build your college list as a junior or practice for the SAT. And you can see those were available in January. We're in May now. Those are still available opportunities right now. And every month, hundreds of students are winning $500 scholarships. And every month, two students are winning the $40,000 scholarship opportunities. And you're doing all of this on bigfutureScholarships.org. And then you want to keep coming back. And starting in July, there'll be new opportunities. You can explore scholarships then. You can strengthen your college list then. And then you're qualified for those opportunities to win those scholarships as well. So the full calendar is from January of your junior year, which has gone past already all the way through February of your senior year, each month you can be qualifying for the scholarships. An action step I would think about doing because everyone should probably do this and it won't take much time at all, is either to A, go into your college board account in order to get to the scholarship opportunities. And we all have, if you're a student in CPS, you have a college board account because that's how you get your scores from the PSAT, or the SAT you just took in the spring, or if you took an AP course, you have a College Board account. So you can log in there to get to Big Future, or you can go directly to bigfutureScholarships.org. You can see the six steps. When you log in, it will show you the six steps and it'll show you your progression. Which ones have you clicked into and qualify for, and which ones are still open for you to qualify for in future months. So we do really hope that you'll take advantage of the opportunity. And we hope that we'll break records on how many students in CPS continue to get these scholarship opportunities. Um, appreciate it. Thanks and good luck to everybody. Thanks so much, Mike. Uh, I can take over the screen share at this point. Uh, and again, you all will receive this deck along with our other presentations in a follow-up email. Uh, but at this time, we want to transition to highlight our uh, great partners over at DePaul Center for College Access and Attainment.
Um, yes, here we go. All right, and I will toss it to our DePaul reps, Kate and Natalie. Um, can everyone, or my screen is still loading, here we go. There it is. Great. <clears throat> thank you, Zachary. Um, thank you so much for having us. Um, my name is Kate Agarwal, and I work for DePaul University. With me here is Natalie, um, one of our student employees um, who is actually graduating in June. She's been with DePaul for six years and she has her master's degree now. Um, she's been doing these workshops with me um, for many years and she also edits essays. Um, so when you guys are writing your scholarship essays, um, she is one of those people that will be getting your essays to edit. So she'll be speaking in just a little while. Um, I'm going to get us started. I am also sharing the link to this presentation in the chat right now. So you guys can take that link and save it and access it anytime you'd like. Um, we have some basic guidelines for writing scholarship essays. Um, also on this first slide, if you can see the QR code, um, we do like to keep track of students that we meet with and speak with at the Paul. So if you wouldn't mind um, registering, it's a very short form. I think it has like four questions um, just to give us your contact info. And then you will also receive various useful information via email from us regarding scholarships and essay editing. Um, so it's a useful thing. So I am here to talk to you about how to craft the best essay to make yourself eligible to win money for scholarships. Next slide, please. So um, not every scholarship requires essays. Nowadays, a lot of scholarships will ask for a video or some other multimedia presentation or other materials to um, evaluate you as an applicant, but many still do require essays or they might require essays in addition to other materials. So it's still important to talk about essay writing, because that's also important for college admission in general. And most of college-based scholarships will require essays for sure. The polls, for example, require essays. Um, and so you may think, oh my gosh, that's a lot of writing. I have to write all these different things for school and I have to write admission essays for admission to college. Why do I have to keep writing admission for scholarship essays? Well, scholarship essays have a very, very clear result you are writing these essays to be eligible for free money. So even though the effort um, might be a lot, because some essays will ask a lot of complicated questions, the result is free money for college, which means you don't have to take loans, you don't have to get an extra job to pay for it. It's really important. Um, and so those scholarships that require essays can vary from just maybe $1,000 or even less, maybe 500, to paying your full ride for college. Um, it's a really, really good way to fund at least partial tuition for college. Um, and so, as it was said earlier, apply to as many as you're eligible for. The academic work site is very good for listing scholarship based on their deadlines. And so as you check often, you will find many scholarships that you might be eligible for. Definitely apply for them and apply for them as soon as possible. Uh, many scholarships can also be found in various companies, corporations, nonprofit organizations. Um, check those out as well. Just do a basic Google search um, for college scholarships. Corporations like Nike, Taco Bell, Pepsi, literally almost all big companies have scholarships for students for college. Um, and they require different things for you to submit. And when there's essays to write, make sure you do a good job because free money is on the line. So don't do it at the last moment. Don't do it, you know, just making a little draft and sending it in. Make sure you do it well. Make sure you pay attention to deadlines and make sure you get someone to edit it for you because that's, that's your college money that's on the line. Next slide, please. And so you can think of scholarship essays as a resume for a job. Um, in order to apply for a job, you have to have a resume. Even if you just apply online, they'll be asking you questions. They need to know who you are as an applicant for a position, same as you need to present yourself as a qualified applicant for a scholarship. And a well-written essay can make or break your chances, just like a quality resume will get you the job. Um, and so the whole point of an essay is to show off your problem-solving skills, show how creative you are, make sure that you use appropriate language, be professional, don't use slang, 
Um, and make sure that you pay attention to questions. As was mentioned before, some questions have two or three parts. So make sure you read the question correctly and understand it well before you start answering to make sure you cover everything that's being asked. So the bottom line is you need to present yourself as a qualified candidate because you want that money that they're offering. Next slide, please. So now let's set you up for success on the writing process for scholarships. The main thing with writing is that you want to start early and pay attention to those deadlines. Don't write the essay a day before it's due. Don't wait a week before it's due and not even a month before it's due. You want to think through these steps before writing down your essay. So make sure that you brainstorm, create an outline, think about how you want to structure your essay. Once you write that first draft, you want to receive feedback, whether that be from a teacher, counselor, a mentor, friend, or family. Again, it is important to start early because you also want to give your editors enough time to look over your draft and provide quality feedback. The more eyes that look over your essay, the better. And always revise, revise, revise. It is okay to pivot ideas after a few drafts, change the organization or structure, add different evidence. Again, this is why you want to start early in order to have enough time to perfect your essay. Before you start writing, you also really want to understand and analyze the prompt. It may just be one question that is asking, but it may have two or three different parts that is really asking you to write about. Um, you also want to pick good examples to support your claims. You don't want to mention that you got to be in math or your test scores because that is something that is already included within the document of your application to this scholarship. And taking into consideration technical elements of essays, you want to have an engaging thesis. You really want to hook in your reader at the very beginning to make them interested in continue on reading. You also want to have support, supporting evidence so that, you so that you just don't tell the reader, rather you want to show them. So if you say you're a leader, then make sure that you provide evidence on your leadership experience. And of course, a strong conclusion. You, these scholarship committees read thousands of essays and you want to stand out and of course, get that money. Next slide, please. Here are some more tips that we have to make sure. So you want to make sure that you do your research over the summer to get ready or even start now. Make a list of scholarships you want to apply to um, in order of their deadlines, you can either do this on the Google Doc, an Excel sheet, or even or on a piece of paper, whatever works best for you. And here we have a few different scholarships um, and their deadlines and how much they are offering. So all scholarships are different. As mentioned, they may ask for different submissions, whether an essay, video. Um, make sure you read how many years the scholarship covers and how much money you may receive. Um, even if a scholarship is $1,000 or $500, you should still apply to it because these college textbooks and access codes are expensive. So trust me, you want to apply to anything and everything. Um, some examples here are the Gates Scholarship, so it gives you a full ride, the Coca-Cola Scholarship, Live Moss from Taco Bell, Winter Scholarship, BMW Engineering Scholarship, literally any big corporation, Burger King, McDonald's, Colgate, you name it, just put that corporation name into Google search, follow it with the keyword scholarship, and you'll be able to see that they have something um, in hand for you. And for the full version of this presentation with more guidelines, details, and expert advice, you can click on the link here. Once you receive the deck, whether a follow-up email or if you've checked out the chat, Kate put it in there. Um, next slide, please. And our office, College Access, has a team of essay editors who are available to edit your essay for free. Yes, for free. Our service is also fast, so please, please send us your essays. The link is here, and we can't wait to can't wait to read your essays, um, and I can't wait to also take a look at them and help you and provide you quality feedback. Thank you all for your time on behalf of the College Access Department at DePaul. Thank you so much, uh, Natalie and Kate. Uh, that was great information. Uh, again, students, if you missed the link, it might have been in the chat, but here it is. Go to paul.edu slash essay dash editing. Um, it's a pretty quick turnaround, right, Natalie? What would you say the turnaround is if uh, a student were to submit an essay? Like two or three business days or even quicker than that, for sure. So this is definitely an opportunity that you all want to take advantage of. And again, it is also in our CPS scholarships link tree.
And we will be working on essays all summer long. We have editors employed still through the summer. So if you guys get started on your essays, if you're starting apply to apply to college or for scholarships, we are here to support you anytime. Thanks so much, Kate. And thank you to all the students, parents, participants who were able to join us today. Um, I know uh, we went a little bit, oh no, we're at 7.01. That was actually really good, guys. <laughs> I was worried that we had gone over too much, um, but we actually are making good time. Uh, so we wanna just say thank you to all of the participants that joined us today, all of our junior students are uh, glad to have you here to uh, get that planning process started and make sure that you are aware that we, uh, there's a support system here and there are resources here to support you as you start to apply to colleges and apply for scholarships. Um, and again, we really wanna thank our presenters today, DePaul uh, Center for Access and Attainment. You are a tried and true partner with us, always coming through for our scholarship events. And thank you so much to uh, Mike Nick from College Board, another great partnership we have. And we definitely encourage you all to do these big future scholarships. It's one of the easiest scholarships to apply for. Um, and at this time, I think we will also take um, any questions from the audience. Yes, when we sent out the deck, we will send out the recording as well, so you will have that for your records. Yes, but we don't, we don't want to keep you if you have to go, so feel free to hop off. Otherwise, stay on and you can do some Q&A with us. And then also, don't forget, July 20th and August 3rd, say the date, we will have some summer workshops for our rising seniors as well. And if you're signed up for our email blast, you'll definitely get an alert for those boot camps. Uh, the recording is going out to those who register for tonight's event. I see Madeline, your hand is raised. Go ahead. Hi, um, I have a question. Do you guys give a scholarship based on sports? So we don't have any uh, athletic specific scholarships, but we are working with sports administration and honest games to make sure that our students are meeting their most are, are presenting their best eligible self to college university so they can qualify for NCAA NAIA scholarships. We actually have one um, actually comes to mind right now. Um, one that closes in the in the May month called the Billy Jean, it was a Billy Jean Memorial Scholarship for female athletes. Uh, we have another one uh, that we promote. Uh, we don't have a partnership with them, but we promote the Foot Locker Athletes uh, Program. That's another sports related scholarship. Um, not a ton, but they're there. <laughs> All right, sounds good, thank you. Any other questions, feel free to raise your hand or come off mic or drop it in the chat. And to Andrew's question, no scholarships do not affect EFC. A lot of scholarships are actually last chance, a last dollar scholarship. So they'll wait till everything is applied for FAFSA, like the gates, everything that's gift aid will be applied and then the gates will come on the back end and cover the rest. Posse is a tuition-based scholarship with a select list of schools that students apply for. It is a four-round selection process. The first round is the school nominate the student for the scholarship. The second round happens around August, September, where kids, the students come down and do a big group activity. Um, and from there, they narrow it down to a second round, where it's an interview. And then the third round, they actually meet the college and university in which they are choosing. Uh, and Fabian, your question around will scholarships transfer if a student goes to college out of the country? So that is very much dependent on the scholarship provider. Uh, a lot of scholarships will list out in the in their eligibility requirements uh, whether or not the student needs to attend a school that's in the U.S. Um, some other scholarships might be more flexible on international schools. Um, a lot of the scholarships that we do deal with are uh, very specific to U.S. colleges and universities. Um, but if you are unclear on that, you can always reach out to the scholarship provider and get that type of insight, um, or unless, if it's not uh, already listed in the eligibility requirements, which it should. Some scholarships are transferable. Uh, that's again, something you have to check in with the scholarship provider and also make sure if it's a renewable scholarship, making sure that you still hit the required GPA requirement for that scholarship. But again, that's something you could talk to the scholarship provider about if you decide to change institutions.
House, is it too late to apply to Posse or did they do the nominations already? Nominations close Tuesday. So schools have to nominate students for a Posse. Schools or community-based organizations that have nominations. So have your student follow up with their counselor tomorrow. Is it better to apply to smaller scholarships as opposed to larger scholarships? We encourage you to apply to all scholarships, small or large. There's always the opportunity and the chance that you will be selected, uh, whether or not it's small or big. Uh, you know, we, we promote so many different local scholarships that range from, you know, $1,500 to, you know, some local scholarships can go up to the 40K. Um, and those, those bigger company scholarships, uh, those tend to be the heavy hitters with the amount that they're giving you. But, um, you know, I say it, it, it doesn't, it, they're applied to all of them. <laughs> Are there specific scholarships for people in the arts? Definitely. Um, a cool thing that we have that we created this year with um, our, our friends at UChicago's to and through project, um, your counselors in the schools all have access to this um, tool, which is like a scholarship match tool. So we basically gave them our entire database of scholarships that we have on hand and we chunked it out to um, so you can better search for it. So your counselor can import your information from Aspen and then they can select like, oh, this person wants to major in arts, let's filter this here. And it'll pull up all the arts scholarships or all the sports scholarships or all of the engineering scholarships. Uh, we do have them, they are available. Um, they'll be posted on Academic Works, but if you really want that sort of targeted list, I would uh, reach out to your school counselor or uh, college and career coach. I'm not sure I understand that question around uh... Scholarships for parents and alumni. If you could come off mute and talk about that one. Um, I'm, a, I'm an alum, DePaul. So if my son goes there, I, to my understanding, there is um, some kind of scholarship or uh, grant that is, is a, a applied to their tuition account if their parent was an alum of the university at DePaul. I can I can answer that. Um, so that's actually not correct. We don't have scholarship for um, alumni children. So we do have a couple of different scholarships for CPS students and Chicago students. So um, your son and daughter would be considered for those. Uh, but as far as being an alumni or a, a having a parent who's an alumni, that's definitely going to help in the admission process. Um, so it's like a positive check mark on your record. Um, you know, there's many, many different things that you can do to kind of make yourself more um, attractive to colleges. And for the poll, we definitely do put a lot of emphasis on children of our alums um, or any family member. Um, but unfortunately, there's no monetary reward that comes with that. Okay, thank you. Sure. And yes, participate in many programs as possible. So yes, Posse also can nominate you from Upward Bound as well. But yes, participate in any opportunity, any pre-collegiate or anybody that's providing post-secondary services, definitely it provides wraparound service. So if you got more people helping you, the better. Uh, Carlos, you if you uh, opted in for the email blast, you should have received a confirmation email just saying that you opted in. But uh, if you are having any troubles, you can always reach out to us at college scholarships at cps.edu. And we can just make sure that you are on the list, sir, uh, if you're unsure. If there are no other questions, again, we want to thank you guys for participating. So yes, if you've signed up and it says for this year, you will still be signed up for next year, yes. But thank you guys for participating in our first junior um, parent scholarship information session. Again, looking forward to seeing you guys over the summer with our two uh, boot camps prior to school starting. All right, you guys have a great day. And again, parents, village, we are here for resources for you as well. You guys can email us and make sure you guys, make sure parents and adults sign up for our scholarship email blast as well, just so you guys are aware. 
If nothing else, you guys have a great day and congratulations. Member juniors, finish strong. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys personally use that same scholarship email address? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, we check it every single day. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, I appreciate you. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for a great session. Very informative. Thank you. No problem. Glad to share. All right. Well, I'm going to end the session for all and I will stop the recording.